anything is harder with fake nails. Hello, Bibliophiles. Yes, well spotted. I have got a haircut. I realized I haven't done a monthly reading wrap up since November. Uh, so let's do one. Let's wrap up February's reading. I had a pretty good reading month. All things. Did I? I had to reflect on that. I think my reading experience is skewed because I read one of the best books I think I will read all year this month, which is The Anthrop Anthropocene Reviewed. It's in the stack. Let me find it. Bam. I've already talked about this in my last video. Not particularly eloquently because I was very sad <laughs> in that video. I was crying a lot. Uh, you can go watch it. I don't care if you watch it, honestly, because it's, it's a bit of a mess. But I did love this book. So I think because I loved this book so much, uh, my perception of the reading month was quite skewed, even though I think overall it was actually a very, very average reading month. Let's talk about the book I was most excited about and I should have seen coming. The 90s Drake by Chuck Klosterman. I've talked about this in my um, most anticipated books or my pre-orders for the year. This came out in early February. It took me a while to read. Now, I, I say a while because normally, one, I read nonfiction quite quickly, and two, uh, Chuck Klosterman is one of my favorite nonfiction writers, or was. Uh, <laughs> and um, this was the subject area I was really interested in, and this book just did not deliver. I mean, I suppose my number one critique of this book is that it felt very recycled. It felt the same as what Chuck Klosterman had written before in other books, perhaps with like different objects of attention, but like ultimately the arguments were the same, his analysis was the same. Um, what I thought was, I mean, I expected this book to be quite music heavy because he is a music person and he knows a lot about music and he's written and researched about music for a long time. But the way that he addresses music in here, it feels like this, I had the sense that he was like holding back, like he wanted to talk about music in every chapter but he was like oh no this can't be just a music book <laughs> so he like throws in footnotes or like different like nods to different ideas throughout this book and then doesn't fully elaborate on it so it just kind of feels like someone at dinner party being like oh I know about that thing I knew about that thing just one more thing that you didn't ask for but I'm just gonna throw in there and it, I didn't love it um so this is you know he talks about the internet he talks about uh the presidents a lot and as I've said before I find American politics extremely boring, confusing, overwhelming. I don't like reading about it very much. It's a it's an area of history I'm not interested in. Um, but I think that uh, I wish. And also, his his subject titles are like uh, "19 Percent," "The Edge," as viewed from the middle. The movie was about a movie, like all this kind of stuff. It's just like what is what happened in that chapter? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, the chapter called "Control Alt Delete." I f tabbed it because. Um, this was about the internet and it felt the most interesting and the most specific to this book of all the other chapters. So it's a bit about sports, it's a bit about movies, a bit about music, a bit about politics. My summary of this book, I suppose, is that this felt unoriginal. Uh, maybe that's kind of a meta analysis of the 90s itself. But anyway, I don't want to get go there because I don't care. But this has just felt underwhelming. A bit boring, a bit repetitive. The writing was fine, um, but it makes me wonder, like, why he wanted to write this book, or maybe he was told to write. I don't. I mean, I have no idea how this publishing deal came about, but it felt like maybe Chuck Klosterman has run out of ideas. One of my booktube spin picks for this round was Beyond Black by Hilary Mantel, and I'll, if you don't know what the booktube spin is, I'll link down below to Rick McDonnell's video where he talks about it and where he does the spin. Um, but this was one of the picks for that, and uh, I'm really glad I read it. I love Hilary Mantel's writing. I have read, but I, mean, I say that, but I've only read from her, her short story collection and the Thomas Cromwell trilogy. And of course, I was like, I need to read more from her. So what I will say with this book, so this is... It says it's a ghost story. It is a ghost story, I suppose, in the sense of it's about two women, um, Allison and Colette. Allison is a medium, so she has like a spirit guide that kind of follows her around. His name is Morris and he's gross. Morris is a low ghost, and I think is how she describes it. Basically, he's somebody who did a lot of unsavory things in his when he was alive in his life. And because of that, he's kind of stuck in this particular category um, as this particularly irritating and unpleasant company to have around. Colette is a woman who, uh, Allison and Colette are a complete contrast in, in every way, like physically, because Allison is described repeatedly and aggressively. And my biggest problem with this book is that she's described with um, a lot of vigor as being 
super fat and it is she is she gets a lot of abuse for that from Colette who is her friend and her partner business partner um Colette is very thin wiry she's also a very not warm person she doesn't let people in at all she cannot really connect with people but she's very business-like she's very organized and focused and she is she I picture her like a like a ramrod straight like she's just somebody who does not bend and then there's Allison who is soft big and soft and internally soft exterior <laughs> internally and exterior on her exterior quite soft um she is warm people um uh, are drawn to her she also connects people a lot because she's a medium and she's like the real deal and so what happens is these two women kind of collided a, per a particular moment in their lives where they kind of need each other they need each other and they have this life together and this not a lot happens in this book in terms of like it's not a really big plot movement or twist or anything mostly just for following these two characters and about their lives and I really think the characters in here are so well developed um the dialogue is super funny. Same thing I found with reading the Thomas Cromwell trilogy. Hilary Mantel is a master of dialogue. I really liked kind of each moment that felt like a scene setting, especially when Allison was working and talking to people. I loved the way that she set the stage for those moments. Like it felt like I was there. Really exceptional development of space and vision. And uh, yeah, I just really loved that. Um, I think as a book, I was disappointed because, I mean, truthfully, I had such a problem with the way that Alice has talked about as a fat person that I, oh, it really, really turned me off. And I don't know how, what to say about that because Hilary Mantel is also a fat person. And I don't know, like, I never want to project an author's experience I mean, obviously every author brings something to, but like, you know, who knows what Hilary Mantel was thinking when she wrote this, but it does feel there's like this level of hatred uh, for, that Allison has for herself and her physical body. Um, and not that Allison herself is someone who outwardly expresses that she hates herself. It's like she lets people consistently abuse her verbally. Not, not just people, Colette, Colette, who is her partner and her, friend and they live together and they work together and I it's I hated it I really hated it and like I think there's maybe a case to be made that like Allison or Al as she's called in the book I think she perhaps understands that like like this kind of stuff just rolls off her and doesn't affect her and you kind of I think perhaps that is a way you could read Allison because she's had so many bad things happen to her in life and we do get into a lot of Allison's backstory and she's a very complex and complicated character. Um, and so is Colette, to be fair. But just their interaction made me, it just made me recoil and I really hated it. And maybe that's a, a mark of how effective this book is, but it was such a turn off for me. Um, I just don't like seeing fat people abused and I don't like seeing fat people take it <laughs> um so that's that's a very personal kind of feeling about that but as a as a writer f I fully intend to read more from Hilary Mantel because I just absolutely loved it and characters are well developed and I think perhaps if you do not have strong feelings about fat representation in books um then this might be a different experience for you continuing on the theme of fatness which I did not know I had <laughs> in this month. Um, I read Fearing the Black Body, uh, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia by Sabrina Strings. And this is a book that looks at historical documents, art, writing, research, uh, philosophy, and how that shaped the American perception of bodies and like the obesity epidemic. It kind of goes up to the obesity epidemic. Um, this book is really interesting. Like I wish I was reading this, I listened to it on audio and I also kind of read it um, I did both and I really really wished that I had had this when I was in university because I would have done so much research analysis like using this as a um, as a text because this is this feels like a PhD thesis or like a some kind of like academic text that was turned into a book but still is very easy to read very accessible very interesting um, but it does have that level of remove, like removal from the text because it does feel like quite academic. But we go from, I don't even know what year it starts in. Like, like I don't know, 1400s. Talk about the Dutch and we go into the English representations of art as well as um, 
like representing female bodies as well as then black women who were taken on like tour to like show off their bodies throughout Europe. Um, and then we move into like American culture and I thought it was really, really interesting. I think, you know, you know if you want to read a book like this, it's not journalism, it's not narrative uh, history, so you're not going to find it, it reads like a novel, but it is super interesting. And it's also quite short actually. This is a lot of this is actually notes. So like there's only like this long, it's 100 and 200 pages or something. So um, enjoyed this, enjoyed, I had a nice time reading this just because it felt like a little bit of a return um, to the kind of reading I did for many, many years. If you're interested in getting this, I would recommend the audiobook because I found it really easy to listen to while I was doing other things or even just like sitting around. Um, and it is only seven and a half hours, really quite short. Um, so if, if you're somebody who struggles with reading nonfiction in the sense of like, if you find like academic work difficult to read, and I, I, it is a different type of reading experience for sure, um, try the audiobook because it's quite good. Another nonfiction I read was Three Cups of Deceit by John Krakauer. This is um, how Greg Mortensen, humanitarian hero, lost his way. And I only picked this up, this was like an impulse purchase for me because I, um, I read Into, what's it called? Into Thin Air, uh, which I read in January and I loved that book uh, by John Krakauer, which is about his ex exploration of, uh, his expedition of hiking Mount Everest and like the absolute disaster that was that experience. And uh, I love John Krakauer's writing and I was looking at his, his, um, I was gonna say his canon, what's it called? His opus, nope, <laughs> his oeuvre, uh, <laughs> what's it called? Um, bibliography of books that he has published and I saw this one, it's, a little, it's kind of like a pamphlet, it's like a hundred pages and this appealed to me because um, I read the book Three Cups of Tea and I knew that there was a bunch of controversy around it. I read this book years ago, I got it for Christmas years and years ago, and I loved it. I remember like just absolutely devoured that book, thought it was really interesting, really moving. I knew there was controversy, but I didn't know what it was. And I tried to find a podcast recently about this. I don't know why this was like brought back to my attention. That book is was published, I don't know, like 2004 or something. Like it's not new. Um, and this was also published in like 2017 maybe or 2016. So it's like, again, this is not new either. But I just needed to know. And I was like, this might be the perfect way to find out what the what the controversy is and yeah I mean basically surprise surprise um what's his name Greg Mortensen was just like stealing money from this company he had set up to build schools in Afghanistan and Pakistan and also uh he didn't do a lot of the things he said he did it's the same story as every grifter but it's still nice to read about it the last two books I have to talk about were on the Giller long slash short list for 2021 and listen up folks we have to talk about the Giller it won't be in this video, but I am going to film a video about my feelings about the Giller because they are strong and they are not abating. Um, okay, so let's talk about the one that I was felt, again, medium about was The Listeners by Jordan Tannehill. And this was a shortlisted for the Giller. And this was what we read for my book club and we had a great discussion about it last night. So um, I am coming to this with a bit more appreciation than I probably felt at the time of reading it. I think my overall impression of this book is that thinking about it, talking about it, processing it is far more interesting than the book itself is. So this is the story of a woman and she lives in a suburb, she has a nice job, she has a nice family and she starts to hear this hum and she can't, it, she can't get rid of it, she can't stop hearing it and it is not just a sound but it also like kind of infiltrates her like existence, her body. And it takes over her life to the point of where she can only talk to other people who experience this and then um, this this book kind of div div starts asking questions about these people who hear this hum. What is it they're hearing? What is their connection to each other? Is this totally above board type of situation? And that does not really write. It's it's a it's a book about a cult or questions about a cult um, or cult ish things. And there's some really really interesting conversations to be had about what this book brings up, the questions it brings up, the experiences it presents and asks you to really wrestle with. So it is interesting in that capacity. Um, but I think as a book itself, it struggles because it is, it's not super well written. Like the writing is okay. It does feel a bit, um, yeah, a bit like entry level, like a bit, <laughs> that sounds awful. What's entry level writing? It does feel a bit like, like, like a grad school <laughs> project. Kind of. There's also not just the writing style itself, but there's big gaps 
in information in this book that would really help flesh out, help build out the tension, would help build out the relationships a bit more. So all of the intention I think behind the idea is there, uh, but as a reading experience it really doesn't give you enough to like grab hold of throughout the book and I think that's a problem. Like I think that's like an actual structural problem with the book um, which makes it again more interesting, interesting in theory than it does in practice. So this is again I'll talk about this in, the, in my Giller video but this is the problem I have with the Giller is that it's an interesting concept but it's such a poor execution of that concept that I don't know why it was on like a prize list. I also just want to kind of flag because I do think there should be some kind of, you know we, we had a discussion last night and I'm not sure what the right answer is but I think there should be some level of like awareness that there is some uncomfortable relationships between an adult and a child in here and it's not explicitly sexual but it's uncomfortable and I felt very uncomfortable um so if that's something that you really don't want to read and I'm I really don't want to read those things. <laughs> um, just so you know that that happens in this book. That was shortlisted for the Giller. I said that The End of Proceeding Review was my best book of the month, but this is also a really good book. This is Casey Plett's A Dream of a Woman. This is a short story collection. This was longlisted for the Giller. And I can't believe, so I've read four or five of the longlist nominees, and some of them are on the shortlist, three of them are on the shortlist. And this is by far the best one of all the ones I have read. And this was not shortlisted. <laughs> and I can kind of see why this was, I mean, it's, they often don't, oh, they always, well, they do, they did shortlist a short story collection. Anyway, this is incredibly well written. And I think I've said this before, something I don't necessarily love in short story collections is when the stories all connect. Um, but, and this one kind of does that, but it almost, but you don't have to even recognize that for it to, for it to be enjoyable. Like, Sometimes you read a short story and you're, I feel like the writer's telling you that you have to build these connections or something you have to connect yourself between these stories. And I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do that work. Like I feel like the only time I should have to work in a book is in a mystery novel when I'm trying to solve a mystery myself. I don't want to have to work in like a literary fiction. That's not my job. That's the writer's job. So this book doesn't do that. There are characters that connect, but I only realize that kind of you know, toward the end of this book. And I was like, oh, okay. And I still really enjoyed it without having to make those connections. The other thing I will say is that this book does this thing where, I don't know if you can tell all the titles here. Maybe you can't tell. I don't know. Um, but there's a story called Absolution and it is broken up into one, two, three, four, five parts. And it's separated by other stories. And so it goes back um, to that story. Also, there's a story called Couldn't Hear You Talk Anymore that also is broken up by another story. So I kind of love that. I never look at um, a table of contents of a short story collection before I read because why? <laughs> like, I don't know any of these stories so it doesn't, I'm not preparing to read any of them uh, more before uh, before another one or whatever. But when I realized it was doing it and had the same characters I was like oh I kind of love this. I kind of love that we're um, going back and forth between these characters. But what I ended up doing because I loved the story Absolution so much I ended up skipping all the ones in the middle and just read the whole story of Absolution straight through because I Loved the characters. I loved where it was going. I thought it was just <laughs> so compelling. I, I wanted to keep staying with those characters. Um, and I like that you can do that if you want to. So this is by and large, a, actually I think every story is about a, a trans person or trans people and their experiences with love and sex and dating and family. One thing I will say is that as like a, a criticism of this book, I'm not, it's, it's, I guess it is criticism but I didn't mind it, is that the stories do feel a bit samey samey. They're all about trans people largely transitioning. Most of the people are uh, in the stories and also about just the challenges around that and about the sex lives of these people. So it, they're a little bit samey samey. Um, but still all the characters are really well developed and they're all interesting and it's great to have the perspective from trans people like narrating their own stories. Um, that's not something I've had a lot of experience reading, so I really, really enjoyed that experience. I think the story Enough Trouble, the second last story in this book, is particularly effective because uh, it, it's not just about a trans person and transitioning, like which is a lot of these stories are about that. It's about a person who has transitioned, has has lived a very different life than the one they grew up, and they come back to their hometown and they have to confront some of like this this new person in their life who's in their hometown 
as well as some of the elements that they grew up with and that are used to and that feel like a a really the nostalgia mixing with the reality is really interesting and I really enjoyed seeing that play out in this book um yeah I thought this was excellent and uh I flew through it it took me like no time to read I just found the writing incredibly easy to read so why was this not shortlisted great question let me know what you read this month your hits your misses your favorites your least favorites etc etc if you've read anything that I have mentioned in this video let me know in the comments down below how you felt about it and I will see you guys soon bye